Well, good evening. Thank you for uh, joining us tonight as we celebrate uh, and remember the lives of both Stephen Spellman and Tyler Abel. Um, we welcome the families of Stephen and Tyler, and thank you for being here. You'll hear tonight how these students were, were connected here at GCU and what this community meant to them as well. Um, the ways they experienced college life and thrived. And we are thankful for this community of faith and the, the shared belief we have in Jesus. And I, I hope tonight that you experience the same peace and hope that we do. And I invite you to experience that peace and to, to join in as we worship and pray and and hear a message from the word. So we will have time of reflection and worship and a little bit of gathering afterwards with refreshments. We hope you stay for that and mingle and meet with family and friends and, and remember. I'd like to start with a scripture from John 14, verses 1 to 3. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we're here tonight to remember the precious lives of Stephen and Tyler. And God, thank you for the gift of life that you've given. We thank you for the stories of how you've worked in each of their lives. And God, we look forward to seeing them again. We pray for the families here tonight and friends who have gathered to, to remember and reflect. God, may we experience peace and comfort in this time of grieving. God, as we celebrate, we worship you, Jesus, who has conquered death and given us life. Thank you for the shared unity together at this community here at GCU and as believers. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Please worship with us.
Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, we have gathered to honor the lives of uh, GCU student Stephen Spellman, Tyler Abel. Stephen Bradley Spellman was born on July 2nd, 2004. He went home to be with the Lord on January 23rd, 2023. He was a freshman at GCU. His major was a Bachelor of Science in Business Management. He survived by his mom and dad, Brad and Belinda Spellman, his brother, Nicholas Spellman, and many friends and other family members as well. Tyler Chase Abel was born on May 7th, 2004, and he passed away to go home to be with Jesus on April the 8th, 2023. He was a sophomore. His major was a Bachelor of Science in Entrepreneurial Studies with an emphasis in engineering management. He is survived by Amber and James Dunn, his mom and dad, sisters JC and Liliana, and other family and friends as well. So thank you for being here. We're grateful to the families for allowing us to do this, um, to take this opportunity to really celebrate their lives. And you're going to hear from some others that will, um, I hope, share stories that uh, may make us cry, may make us laugh. Uh, I hope that uh, this will indeed be an opportunity for us to celebrate the lives of these two young men. Before uh, we invite those guests up, I want to read just a couple scriptures for you. It'll just be a couple minutes. The first one is from James chapter 4, verse 14. And it says this, Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow, you are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Life is brief. It's precious, it's fragile, and it's brief. On a night like tonight, um, we're reminded of that, aren't we? Um, how valuable each and every day is. There's another passage of scripture that says this, though. God is near to the brokenhearted. In Psalm 34, 18, it says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. I hope that you have the same hope that most of us have here tonight. And that is the hope of heaven and an eternal place that we will live forever with the God of creation. 2 Corinthians 5.9 says this, To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. For those that have come to that place of faith in Jesus means that when we leave this life, we go to be with him. Eternal life is found in Jesus. John 3.16, which you've probably heard before, says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And lastly, what we're here to do tonight is to celebrate these lives. To be thankful, to be grateful for the time that we had with them. As painful as it may be, I hope that the ministry that we will share with one another to appreciate the time that we had with these two young men. Romans 12 says, Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. 
In Ecclesiastes 3, there is time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. There is a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. No doubt you have shed tears. You have wondered about why things like this happen, and I don't have an answer for that. But what I do know is that God can do things for us that we cannot do for ourselves. And he has an amazing way of working through others to bring a medicine to our hearts in times of loss and times of sadness. So we're going to invite some uh, friends and family members to come to the podium and share some things that uh, the family would like to hear um, or would like you to hear, and some other perhaps stories and memories about these two young men. We are going to start with uh, Jared is going to um, start off by reading some thoughts from the Spellman family about Stephen. We'll have two other speakers, Caitlin and Jack, that will follow, and then we'll hear from a few that will speak about Tyler. So, Jared, if you would, please. I'm going to share some words from Brad and Belinda Spellman about their son. Stephen Bradley Spellman went home to be uh, went home to Jesus on January 23rd, 2023, at the tender age of 18 years in Phoenix, Arizona. He is the beloved son of Brad and Belinda Spellman, the best little brother and sidekick of Nicholas Spellman, and a pet boy to his dog Shadow. He was born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona. Stephen attended Simus Elementary School and Madison Meadows Middle School in the Madison School District. He graduated from Sunny Slope High School in Glendale Union High School District in May of 2022 with a GPA of 4.0. Stephen received the principal's pass for straight A's for the 21 and 22 school year an honor roll in September 2021 and February 2022, and a hard-earned scholarship to ASU, U of A, and NAU. He chose to attend Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona to pursue a business management degree. He was a full-time student, and prior to the start of his freshman year, he had a part-time job and was very proud to be a contributor, and to pay his taxes. Throughout his school years, he played on the Rams baseball and was chosen to play in the Cal Ripken League where his team won the AZ State Championships at the age of eight years old. Go Rams! He continued his baseball career throughout his high school years where he played on club teams and the Sunny Slope Vikings varsity baseball team where he uh, achieved the AIA All-Region All-Academic Award with the nominations from his teammates and coaches. He also received the Viking Award in his letter in 2022, Go Vikings. He was a Boy Scout. He was a Sunny Slope Air Force ROTC. He loved to fish, camp, hunt, bike, and kayak. He volunteered at his church and other organizations and helped his neighbors as well. Stephen leaves behind his extended family, maternal grandmother, paternal grandfather, eight aunts and uncles, and eight cousins. Stephen loved to clown around and always had fun something funny to say. He couldn't keep a secret to save his life. His eyes and big, beautiful smile spoke volumes. He loved his family, we love him, and was a blessing to us all. He had a love and a generous heart, but most important, he was a believer and a faithful servant. Stephen's favorite Bible verse was John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Let us all take comfort that he is with our Savior, watching over us, and that he is healed in God's mercy. Stephen's parents and brother want to thank all his extended family and friends for all your prayers of comfort and to know that it is our honor and privilege to have Stephen be a blessing to all of you as well. God is good. He is good indeed. Also going to share something uh, that the Spellman family wants to say to their son. Our beloved, handsome son, your future was bright because you were a light full of love, compassion, generosity, humor, and so much more. Your presence and departure has left an enormous impact on our family. And we are grateful for all the time that we had with you. There are no doubts that you are in God's love, loving arms and full of joy. We surrender to him and seek peace in our hearts, which are full of your memories. Psalm 27, 1 through 3. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hi, my name is Caitlin, and I'm a freshman here at GCU. My family and I have had the privilege to be close with Stephen and his family for the last five years as close friends and neighbors. Stephen, as long as I knew him, was friendly, joyful, goofy, and Christ-like. The year my family and I moved here, Stephen and I's freshman year at high school, we would always go outside, be in our street with our siblings and fellow neighbors, playing sports and having fun. It was awesome to see him and his family's relationship and their effort to make my family welcome. Stephen worked hard in school and also in baseball. He was a team player and a leader, making a lasting impression on his teammates. One of my favorite memories of Stephen was when he played in a co-ed badminton tournament with me put on by our school. The memory of us practicing outside our houses while Stephen diligently tried to master the new sport in one afternoon was very entertaining. It was a day full of laughter and a memory I'll forever cherish. He took time out of his week to, put, to play in a small tournament, but did so with such enthusiasm and joy. This is just one example of how Stephen was so kind and how his parents instilled a drive in him and his brother to help out their community. Randomly mowing our lawn to help my mom out or helping my neighbors pick fruit. From one thing to another, Stephen was always serving others. I plan to remember Stephen's life by doing my best to, to always, oh sorry, <laughs> by doing my best to serve others in our community with the same joyful attitude he had. I encourage you all to remember Stephen by acting on what their family always preached, which is love God and love others. Thank you, Brad and Belinda, for raising a son who was a role model to so many. Stephen's favorite verse was John 3:16. The, the message, word reason, the message word version reads, "This is how much God loved the world. He gave His Son, His one and only Son, and this is why, so that no one need be destroyed by believing in Him. Anyone can have whole and lasting life." Thank you, and have a good night. Hello everyone, my name is Jack Steinmeier. I was one of Steve's close friends and sweet mate here at GCU. I just wanted to share a few things about Steve, such as how we met and the kind of person that Steve was to me and the effect that he had on me as a person during the months that we lived together. When starting college, there's a lot of things that I was very anxious about, but what I was most anxious about was wanting roommates and sweet mates that I could have fun with and get along with well. One of the those were the people that I was going to be living with for the whole year and hoped to be able to live with for the rest of college, so I wanted to spend all my time with them. When I met Steve on move-in day, my first impression was that he was a quiet and pretty introverted guy, although I was very, very wrong. 
After a few days, Steve began to knock on our door and ask if we wanted to go out of the dorm and do something. Um, oh, this meant doing something meant anything because since Steve was always trying to find things to do and always wanted to expand his goon squad, as he used to say, which was what he called his friend group. After those first couple of days of going out, he no longer had to knock on our door since it was always open for him. Steve did so much for me, which I can never repay him for. He introduced me to so many wonderful people, such as his brother Nick, who lived on our floor at the time, along with many, friends from, many of his friends from Sunny Slope High School, who were all super welcoming to me when I didn't have many friends of my own out here. During the school year, Steve, Nick, Silas, and I did mostly everything together, whether it was going someplace to eat, playing the new Call of Duty, watching a new TV show or movie every week, or the adventures that we took off campus. When I came to college, I thought I was going to be doing all my learning from my professors, but I ended up doing a majority of my learning from Steve. Steve taught me how to be a better person with him, being, with him bringing out not only the good in me, but also the good in everyone else he hung out with. He showed me how to be a better person, or I mean, he showed me how to be a better brother as well, with me personally aspiring to have the type of relationship that Steve and Nick had with, brother, with my brothers of my own. In the nights before Steve passed, Steve got us all to sit down and started watching the Rocky movies, since I had never seen any of them before. And all he could talk about was how good they were and how much he loved Rocky and was shocked that I'd never seen them before. We only got to watch the first two movies together, unfortunately, but that didn't stop me from finishing them all. I wanted to see why Steve loved them so much, so watching them was very therapeutic for me. Steve's little beach chair was still sitting in our room while I watched Rocky take on Clover Lang and Ivan Drago, and sitting there made me feel like Steve was still there right next to me watching. During that time, when I was finishing the Rocky movies for Steve, I was really struggling to find the motivation to keep going in school and also just in life since I wanted everything to stop and didn't see the point of continuing college without my best friend to keep me going every day. But in the very last movie called Rocky Balboa, Rocky gave a speech to his son who's ready to give up on life and stop trying, which at that point was exactly how I felt. Rocky tells his son, the world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place and it'll beat you down to your knees if you keep it, and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or no one is gonna hit as hard as life, but it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. After hearing that, it really stuck with me and is something that I try to live by now that I don't have Steve to keep me going every day. Now as I go on to college and my life without Steve, I'll always remember to do it for Steve since that's what he would have wanted. There was never a dull moment with Steve since he was always planning something he always, because he wanted the best college experience possible. And although I'll never be able to have that same college experience that he had planned for us, I'm gonna do my hardest since I tried or since I, I'm going to do my hardest to try, since I know he would have done the same for me. I love you, Steve, and there hasn't been a day that goes by where I haven't thought about you and all the things that you wanted to do with us. I can't wait for the time where we can meet again, and I can tell you all about how college went and how much you've impacted my life. Until we meet again, thank you. We have uh, several other speakers that will be speaking on behalf of Tyler, so would you? Good evening, I'm Amber, Tyler's mom. Also with me to celebrate Tyler is his dad, JD, his sisters, JC and Lily, his girlfriend, Leela, his grandparents, his aunts, uncles, cousins, and many of his friends. Some that have known him since kindergarten all the way to those that have met him this past year here at GCU, all of which made an impact in Tyler's life. I know that Tyler touched all of our hearts, so thank you for all being here. I 
have a passage that I came across. His memory is reflected in the hearts of those he touched. Um, I'm somewhat unprepared for this speech. It took me a few days to decide to get up here, remembering when Tyler was unsure and very nervous about speaking at graduation as vice president of student council. So this is one of the many ways I'm wanting to honor him. Um, A verse from Matthew 5, 8 that has touched my heart lately. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. From a young age, I knew Tyler was going places in life. He had big dreams, a big heart, and excelled in school. It was a battle to make him stay home when he was sick or to miss school for appointments or even go on vacation. It was hard to keep up with him. He wanted to try everything, football, Boy Scouts, Good News Club, Child Evangelism Fellowship, um, Archery, Sharpshooters, Yearbook. He was the student Rotarian in his senior year and vice president of student council. I'm sure there's much more that I forgot. Tyler was the only student to complete and graduate with an architecture honor cord. This gave him the opportunity for an internship at TROR, a local construction company in Kingman, Arizona. During the summer before starting college here at GCU, I'm sure we can all agree Tyler made an impact on all of us. He was the reason after many years of being an estranged or lost Christian, I walked through the front doors at what is now our home church, Central Church of Kingman. We were baptized together on January 6th, 2019, and have been attending faithfully as a family for about four years now. Um, Tyler loved many things, church, work, school, uh, camping, motorcycles, anything with a motor in it, which he got from his dad. (laughs) Um, That really grew when he uh, came to college and got a job at Cycle Gear, where he, I know, has met so many friends. Um, here's a poem that I found. No farewell, farewell words were spoken. No time to say goodbye. You were gone before we knew it, and only God knows why. I believe in my heart those paths that were chosen paved the way for all the amazing things that Tyler accomplished. After earning his degree, he planned on returning to work in Kingman at TROR and planned on helping the company branch out to Prescott Valley where he wanted to start the next chapter of his life. Again, I want to thank everybody for coming and I'd like to read one more um, poem or something. May the wind kiss your face and the warm sun on your back as you ride the golden highway to heaven. Kick stands up. Let's ride. Upright, my son. I love you then. I love you now. And I will love you forever. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I have the opportunity to share a little bit from uh, some of Tyler's coworkers and friends at Cycle Gear. Um, they wrote something um, that I'm excited to get to share with you guys tonight. So, on behalf of coworkers and friends from the Peoria Cycle Gear crew, um, including Bradley Fontana, Cody McConkey, Jeremy Behe, Vince Barrera, Will Bray, and Liberty Marsh. If you didn't know Tyler, it would not take you long to realize how passionate he was about motorcycles, whether it was riding them or working on them. While working with us at Cycle Gear, he would constantly say how much he loved his job. 
Tyler was a person that no matter what he did, he always had a smile on his face. His infectious personality not only touched us as his friends, but also carried over to the customers as well. Whatever he did, he did 110%. In the 10 short months that he worked with us, he built a customer rapport that none of us will ever have. Customers would come into the store and specifically ask for him because they knew he would take care of them. We always give each other a hard time around the store, and he would be the first to take a joke and give one right back. He once made the mistake of telling us that he still had baby teeth and had adapted the nickname Baby Tooth that he happily embraced. Even frequent customers and friends he made along the way called him Baby Tooth as well. Tyler did not have a bad bone in his body, and his everyday great attitude showed us that. Tyler may have only been with us for a short time, but the impact he had on customers and us as his friends will last for a lifetime. The Peoria Cycle Gear crew will ride with you again one day, brother. We love you, baby tooth. Hello, my name is Lee Lovraid. Um, I knew Tyler because he was my boyfriend, obviously. Um, not only was Tyler an amazing boyfriend to me, but he also was an amazing friend to so many. He was like a Band-Aid. <laughs> Once you talked to him for 10 minutes, he was stuck and he never left. He always made sure that, you were, like, that he treated you like he knew who you were for as many, so many years. For those who probably don't really know who he was, I really hope this kind of describes the kind of person he was. <laughs> One thing that I loved about Tyler was the way that he loved the Lord. He always wanted to watch church with me and always wanted to involve me and his path and just the way that we always involved church together and always brought the Lord into anything we ever did. One thing about him was that he was so competitive that he would always brag about his long streak on that Bible app. Whenever he had a moment to brag, he would always jokingly do it. He always put God first in whatever he was doing and made sure that you knew by the way he treated you and the way that he lived his life. If you couldn't tell by, you know, the helmet and the funny sweatshirt, um, Tyler was such a huge motorcycle lover. And we spent so much time riding together. Whenever he had a chance, it would just be me and him and obviously all of his amazing friends that rode with him. One thing about Tyler is that he loved Facebook, but not just Facebook, Facebook Marketplace. He, I've never not saw him looking on Facebook Marketplace. He practically lived on the app. <laughs> when we would go riding, he was always so safe and careful. And you would think someone who rode motorcycles would be so reckless, <coughs> Josh. But he cared so much about me and being safe with not only his friends, but whoever really was riding with him. He loved riding with other people at GCU, and he always m made sure that he made friends and always talked about his bikes and, you know, just made sure to ride with everyone he could. We always talked about how this summer I was going to get my motorcycle permit and save up for a bike so we could ride together next year. I wish we had a little more time to do the things that we planned together. I'm sorry, Mom, for this one. Tyler was one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. Not only did the sweatshirt show the kind of person he was, but the situations he put himself. <laughs> Not only did he run from the cops <laughs> on his motorcycle one too many times, but the fact that he would make me help him do other legal things. I remember riding with him when he still had his old victory bike, and he would tell me to cover the license plate when we got too close to a it becoming a red light. I would always freak out and look at him like he was crazy, but you know, I would still do it because I didn't want him to get a ticket. <laughs> Looking back on it now, he was one crazy person, but I totally loved him for it. He always knew how to make you laugh, especially with putting you in these crazy situations. One of my favorite and last memories was Tyler, was when he randomly told me that one day we would go out 
and do fun stuff. And we were going to go out to the city. We were going to enjoy this nice ice cream place and go bowling. He got so upset that I was beating him in bowling and that he said the game was rigged, when in reality, he was just very competitive and was making up excuses. <laughs> that was one of the last times we did something together, unfortunately. And I will never, ever forget the ride back in his truck from the city to GCU. The little grin he had when I sang some silly songs to him. That fact that he loved with being with me so much and enjoyed doing things so much. I'm going to miss that so much. And I'm so thankful that God brought us into each other's lives to impact each other. He always told me I was going to be his last, and obviously that was God's plan, and I wouldn't have changed it for the world. If Tyler was still here with us, I feel like he'd be thankful we are instead celebrating his life and remembering him instead of being super sad about missing him. One of the plans I made with Tyler was to watch all the Fast and Furious movies with him, and I picked out a quote that I feel like best described him. If one day speed kills me, don't cry, because I was smiling. He loved doing the things he loved, and that is so, so important to remember. I know a lot of people at GCU don't like motorcycles to the point where they believe breaking them and destroying them is okay, and I would appreciate if you would just not do that and just listen to me for at least one moment. Many people riding on motorcycles in general just have so many families and people that are looking forward to getting home to. So please, look out for bikes. You never know when there's gonna be one there, and you know, they got family and people they love so, so much. <sighs> Hearing it from me isn't enough. At least do it for Tyler, because he cared so much about motorcycle safety. Thank you to all of those that shared with us tonight. We're going to hear a couple more songs before we leave, and then we'll close in prayer. And there'll be a slideshow um, before we leave. So we invite you to stick around for that as well um, before we leave. So. Oh, my.
Is over, and this world has been reborn. I'll be there beside my Savior. This is our great and rich reward. Cause there is hope beyond the suffering.
Would you pray with me? Lord, we come to you tonight knowing that you are the God of all comfort and asking you to bring comfort to those of us here tonight. We thank you that you are a God who is near to the brokenhearted and that you bring peace in the midst of sorrow. So tonight we ask for that overwhelming peace in this moment and for the days ahead. We put our hope and trust in that one day you will wipe away every tear from our eyes and that there will be no more death or mourning or pain as you dwell with us again. And until that day, would you be near to us? It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Well, on behalf of the families, we are so thankful that you guys are here tonight. As we close, there'll be a slideshow that we invite you to stick around and watch. And then afterwards, there's refreshments in the back. And we also have our student care team here. If anyone needs anyone to talk to, they would love the chance to get to talk to you. They'll be in the back. So please enjoy the slideshow. Thank you.